Good morning. How does Jeremiah react to the spiritual lethargy of God's people? Where Jeremiah 4 verses 19 to 22, Oh, my soul, my soul, I am pain in my very heart. My heart makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because of you have heard, O my soul, the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Destruction upon destruction is cried for the whole land is plundered. Suddenly my tents are plundered and my curtains in a moment. How long will I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are silly children and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil but to do good, they have no knowledge. Jeremiah is pained in his heart. He's emotionally overwrought. Judgment is now coming, and the sound of war is heard. He sees the land will be plundered. He even sees the, remember the curtains and the tent? Uh, this is talking about the, the sanctuary. It's that kind of symbolism here. The, even the sanctuary is going to be plundered. How long, Jeremiah asks, how long will this judgment last? The people are described, kind of interesting, as silly. You know, they're to be trained in righteousness, but instead they seem to have been trained for evil. They've, they've heard right things, but they, they are very adept at evil. And right there is our thought today. What happens when God's truth, designed to train people in, in right, is spun around, and by, by those who teach it, it leads them to evil? What is the result of that? The result of falsely teaching the truth can only be that, that it, it turns out badly. When God places the truth before people, but then they turn it around and they teach it in a rationalistic uh, way, or they focus on the, the actions the, of little traditions and things we do, when we don't have the heart in it, that's when things usually go very, very wrong. And here's a nation who who uh, have been exposed to, to much of God's truth, but, but their leaders are like 100% out. They're in the wrong place. And so the people have been trained, so to speak, in evil. Kind of a, a queer thing there between truth and evil. To neglect or to ignore truth inevitably means to kind of go sideways to it. And that's always going to end up in the wrong pathway. It's going to lead to an unfaithful response you know, the, the, the responsibility upon leaders in God's church is, is, truly, is truly enormous uh, to have the truth, to have the truth and then to teach the truth. We have, we fairly can say we have the truth. We have not taught it well. And when truth is not taught well, it always is twisted out and becomes a very hostile, a very negative thing. So we need to be really engaging with the truth that God has put into his word so that we can live truly by the truth, by his truth, the truth of Jesus that changes our hearts. Leaders have to be kept to a very high standard, and then we'll be glad there. But when, when we accept something less, it always goes way wrong for his people. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help your church. You certainly have helped it by giving us the Bible. But have we embraced it? Are we a people of the book? Are we ready to be changed by this word? Or are we going to look for lots of little alleys and passageways into uh, places of our own preference instead of, instead of in, in full harmony of the x-ray power of your truth? As you, as you come and show us, Lord, what is right, we are revealed in your light. Uh, but what will we do, Lord? Will we run and hide or will we, will we say, Lord, turn it up higher? Please, Lord, turn it up higher. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. May God give us faithful leaders who understand these tangled times. God, go with you today in all that you do.